Well, there's a country far beyond the starry sky. Oh, there's a city where there never comes a night. And if we're faithful, we shall go there by and by. Oh, in that city where the Lamb is the light. Oh, in that city where the Lamb is the light. Oh, in that city where there cometh no night. I've a mansion over there that is free from toil and care. I am going where the Lamb is the light. And here we have our days of sunshine, but we that the sun which shines upon us now so bright will be changed to clouds and rain until we go oh to the city where the lamp is the light oh in that city where the lamb is the light oh in that city where there come and go high i've a mansion over there shall be one eternal day without a night, and our tears shall forever be wiped away. Oh, in that city where the Lamb is the light, oh, in that city where the Lamb is the light, oh, in that city where there come and go. our disappointments all the while and our fondest hopes but meet with bitter blood though by night we wipe the morning brings a smile oh in that city where the lamb is the light oh in that city where the lamb is the light oh in that city where there come and go over there that is free from toil and care. I am going where the Lamb is the light. Oh, and God has got a bride that's marching through the land with praises in her mouth and healing in her hand. Oh, everlasting joy and gladness in her heart. And in this bride I've got a part. Oh, Yes, God has got a bride that's marching through this land with praise. Amen now. Healing in her hand and everlasting joy and gladness in her heart. And in this bride I've got a Oh, sing it again now. Oh, God has got a bride that's marching through this land with praise in her mouth and Oh, everlasting joy and gladness in her heart. And in this bride, I've got a part. Oh, yes, and in 
this bright eye, gotta borrow one more time. And in this bright eye, I've got a part. Amen. Aren't you thankful that you have a part in this bride? Amen. Leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If the world from you withholds of its silver and its gold, and you have to get along with meager fare, oh, just remember in His Word how He feeds the little bird. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Just listen to this next verse. If your body suffers pain and your health you can't regain, and your soul is almost sinking in despair, Jesus knows the pain you feel. He can say and He can heal. Take your burden to the Lord and leave.
am again. Oh, and here I am again, just to worship Come, let's just sing this. In moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus.
Because he first loved us. And if we feel this way about him, how must he have first felt about us? Our love is just a reciprocal love. We love him back because he first loved us. What a comfort that is to our hearts. And God bless you. It's certainly good to have you here. We've been looking forward to coming to this service again. And so glad for those of you who are able to join us, all the visitors that are here, you're welcome. God bless you, Nathan. It's good to see you. So we're just so happy that you're here with us, everybody who's come. And I just want to say we had a wonderful men's fellowship breakfast for all the brothers that were there. We had a wonderful time, and we appreciate uh, Brother Donovan and Sister Stephanie Fisher for hosting that and all those who helped them. But Brother Dan Ratliff shared some testimony with us, and it was a real blessing. We're really edified by that, and so appreciate that. The youth had a wonderful gathering. They had a good time, and now we've come to the part we've been looking for to hear from our Lord, amen, to receive from his hand the manna from heaven, amen. We're looking to our great shepherd to come and feed us his sheep. Many of you come expecting? He'll meet that expectation. Have you come to receive, amen? If we've come, if we understand what God has taught us in this age and how he speaks to us and how he communicates to his children, then we know we've got to reach beyond the veil of flesh because that's just a conduit. We've got to pull down from heaven what we have need of tonight. But there's going to be a channel standing in the pulpit. And if you need something from the Lord, God can speak through those lips. If we believe that, we'll receive the benefit of that if we can receive it. Men, I just want to remind you there'll be a fellowship in the fellowship hall immediately after the service. So all that are here, you're welcome to attend. We'd love to have you there. I just want to say it's been good to serve the Lord. It's been good to be here last night in the fellowship this morning, and we're pleased and thankful and grateful that we could be here again this evening. Amen. We appreciate our brother Abraham, appreciate the life that he lives and the light that he shines and the ministry that God's entrusted him with. We're thankful that he's yielded to that, and we're the beneficiaries of that at this time. Amen. So we're going to turn the service over to our brother Abraham. God bless you. Let's sing, brother. Here I am, Lord, Lord, here I am. I give all myself to Thee, Lord, here I am. Oh, he 
bless you and good evening, everybody. I trust that everybody is doing fine by the grace of God. Of course, we've never lived for ourselves. We live for him. Amen. It's special. It's a special privilege to live for him. Yes. And who are we that he called us to live that kind of life? You know, there is always that popular saying, life is short. Enjoy it to the fullest. But I am glad that I don't have that short life. Amen. <laughs> I have a long one, an internal one. Yeah. And I'm not in a hurry. So even if there is a, a little piercings here and there, I know I've just begun. Yeah. And the, the better, the best is yet to come. Amen. So we are really privileged to be in the house of the Lord this evening again. And um, suddenly, as the brother said, I enjoyed the fellowship with the brethren in the, in the morning, it was wonderful. And of course, you people have a charming way of fellowship. You are so special. <clears throat> so I was telling the brother, if it was possible, I would just migrate and become your assistant pastor. <laughs> <clears throat> but he's, you know, he's a little bit, you know, he, he turns his things and he said, me, I would be your assistant. So. <laughs> But we really thank God for the grace he's given us, and may we humble ourselves for a word of prayer. <clears throat> Dear loving Heavenly Father, I want to thank you again for this evening as your servant, for the grace you've given us to be in your house, and who else are we looking to? Our eyes are looking to you. Our hearts are beating, Lord, with expectation, waiting to hear from you. Lord, living in the days of the voice of God, we are thankful that, God, we are not just beating in the air as it were. We have reality to hold on. And I pray that, God, you'll come and anoint your servant again, and, and Lord, and let it be that, Lord, we behold the unveiling of God in our midst, and that, God, you'll deal with each individual you are that great El Shaddai, yes. the breasted God yes. who can, Lord God, meet all our needs. Amen. And I don't care what it is. Yes. You know yes. everyone about us. Amen. All of us, you know us. Yes. Lord, you are able to deal with all our needs and with all our requests. Amen. And I'm praying that God, your princess, will be here this evening to bless your people to heal the sick, to transform, to bring us, Lord God, into a closer relationship with you. And that's the most important thing that we are here for. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you all the glory. And I pray, Lord, as I step out of the way, give me the grace to completely do so. And that, Lord, you step into this chasm and, Lord, have a way with your children in the perfect way that you foreordained it for this day. And bless the reading of your word in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So just turning to our Bibles before we sit down, I, I wanted us to read a scripture in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18. And I wanted to start from verse 18. Then said they, come, let us devise devices against Jeremiah. For the law shall not perish from the priest, nor the counsel, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come and let us smite him with the tank. Let us, not, let us not give heed to any of his words. Look at such a plot. Give heed to me, O Lord, and hearken to the voice of them that contend 
with me. That now is Jeremiah's prayer in answer to that. Because I'm rejected by reason of the word, then give heed to me. And verse 20 says, Shall evil be recompensed for good? For they have digged a pit for my soul. Remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them and to turn away thy wrath from them. So this was the ministry of Jeremiah. And if there is any prophet who was really persecuted and fought, Jeremiah was one of them, beaten, thrown into pits. And Gentiles would be sympathetic with Jeremiah, not the Jews. But now I wanted us to compare it with what we, we have in the book of Amos. Amos chapter 7. Amos chapter 7, I wanted to pick it from verse, um, I think let's begin from verse 12. Also Amaziah said unto Amos, and you remember this, Amaziah was a priest, and the priest is the equivalent of today's pastor. A preacher. And so he was a priest under the prophetic ministry of Amos. But you see what the pastor is saying. Also Amaziah said unto Amos, O thou seer, go, flee thee away into the land of Judah, and there eat bread and prophesy there. But prophesy not again any more at Bethel, for it is the king's chapel and it is the king's court. Then he answered Amos and said unto, to, to Amaziah, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was a hard, an hardy man and a gatherer of scammon fruit. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock. And the Lord said unto me, Go prophesy unto my people Israel. May God bless his word and bless you. May be seated. And just following up on what we were trying to, to share yesterday. When you fail to get a hold of reality, that is beyond a prophetic office. When you begin to focus on a prophet, that which you valued reaches a time that you begin to see faults, you begin to fight it, you begin to resist it. Amaziah, the priest, who was close with Amos, who worked with Amos, turns around and says, leave this place. We don't want to hear you prophesy here anymore. Go to Judah. By that time, remember, Israel was divided into two. The, the ten tribes versus the, the two. So the, he's telling the prophet, go and prophesy to those not here. We don't need you here anymore. And look at the kind of response that the prophet is saying. He says, I was no prophet. Glory to God. <laughs> I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son. I never became a prophet. I don't belong to a hierarchy of prophets. I was not a prophet by default. It was not my intention to be a prophet. I never wanted to be a prophet. 
I was gathering scum of fruit. I was a herdsman. I was looking after cattle. So it's not my fault being a prophet. It wasn't in my plans. I never intended it to be one. But I found myself, I am one by the Lord's calling. So I never called myself, he called me. I never gave him a gift that he gives it back to me. He gave me the gift, he called me. I answered, and I am what I am by his own decision, not because I wanted. So today I'm going to speak in defense of the prophet, in defense of the pastors, and in defense of believers. Genuine believers, that is. So that where you are, you should know in this fluid situation that we are in before we go home. How do you place your stand? Whom do you look to? To whom are you accountable? Whom are you here to please? Why are you here anyway? And I'm talking about man devised devices against the infallible and immutable prophetic message. Let us devise devices against Jeremiah. Who is Jeremiah? But just God's, God's mouthpiece. Did he send himself? No. Did he want to be a prophet? No. Did he train himself? No. You remember Jeremiah was even giving an excuse. I'm just a younger man. I don't know how to speak. Lord, why did you call me? And God said, I'm going to be with your mouth. I'm going to give you words to speak. Jeremiah didn't want to do it. God told him you have to do it. You didn't want to be a believer. You cannot even convince me, brother, brother, brother Abraham, I wanted to be. I even if you say, I loved God, it's not you who wanted to love God. The prophet says you are not the believer. It's the Holy Ghost in you that is the believer. So, if, if you are wrong for being a believer, you are a victim. And I'm a victim for being a preacher. I'm not the culprit. Because I never sent myself. And you never wanted to be a servant of the Lord. And now, don't be ashamed of what you are because of what they say about you. Don't even feel belittled. Of course, they will belittle you. They'll speak a lot of negative words about you. But you are not responsible for that. You are just what you are because God wanted you to be what you are. And the devil wants you to begin to develop some negative sentimental reactions about what you are. Come on. This is a time to know that these things have to be. So now there is a mystery why these forces are rising up. And then if you are living in such a day, Thank God that you are living in such a day that Jeremiah lived in. Amos lived in. Moses lived in. All his great prophets and even Brother Branham lived in them. So who are you? Why do you think you'll be an exception? Why should you fret? Why should you think you are going to freak out? You are going to face the music. You are the person. God, all heaven is looking at you. Glory to God. Oh, brother brother Chad, I wish I was a good preacher. (laughs) Glory be to God. Now, if we can go back to the book of Jeremiah, I want us to examine the way they framed it. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 18, there are reasons why they have to smite the prophet with a tank. They can't do anything else. They will use intellectualism. They are good orators, good speakers. 
So they smite the prophetic office with a tongue. Because what was dangerous to them also came by the tongue. The prophet is God's mouthpiece. It was the word of God through him. So what do you expect the devil to do? Also smite you back by the tongue. Because what comes through the tongue is the enemies. What the enemy doesn't want to hear. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. So he says, and they say, come. So it is a they. It's not he say. It's a group. So you think you should be surprised that there is a group? No? They said, come. They, they, they gathered together. They formed a group. They said, come. And let us devise devices. Let us devise devices. And if, 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 of course English is not my language. You know what a device, a device is. And to device. To lay a, a strategy, some kind of plan. Plot. Let us have a scheme or a project designed to deceive, to counter an artifice, a technique uh -huh, that we, we, the authors thereof, are going to use to sp or, or to speak, to use in a way to present that will evoke emotional response from the audience against what they believed was right. Hmm. So some kind of rhetoric, rhetorical device that they are devising a device and this device is oral. And they are saying, and they said, come and let us devise devices against Jeremiah. What is wrong with Jeremiah? What crime? What evil? Blinded. They failed to get a hold of the reality that went beyond Jeremiah. They stuck at the office of Jeremiah. They looked at Jeremiah as their problem. Jeremiah became their problem. So that's why yesterday we were saying go beyond that office. And when you are like, when you become like John, I mean James and Andrew, those two disciples of John the Baptist who had him say, Behold the Lamb of God, and caught the revelation and immediately went beyond the introducer to the introduced. They never bothered what they are saying anymore about the other office. They had already left. Glory to God. And when you got where Jesus is, you are in union with him. You have gone to see the home. You are in heavenly places with him. You are lost. You are taken away in the inner veil. You are with him, having communion with him. You don't even hear what they are saying about the office this way. It doesn't even affect you. But you have to know that these devices are there. And what should be the standard against them? So it's a project. Satan made a project. And it's involving a group. And this group must be people who know exactly what the minister of Jeremiah is. They are conversant. Maybe they are contemporaries. Maybe they have grown up in his message. They know some history. And they can piece this up and piece it up and remember those scientists that popped up in the dream that Brother Branham was rehearsing from a certain brother who told him. He says when he was saying, I'll ride this trail once more. I was preaching that recently somewhere in Kenya. I'll ride this trail once more. What happened? He says there was a bunch of scientists in a room mixing things in test tubes and they shrugged their shoulders. And then my question was, why should a bunch of scientists 
arise on the scene where the prophet is saying, I'll ride this trail once more. And who is going to ride it once more? Brother Branham will not rise up to ride it. It's the spirit that was in the prophet that is upon the Elishas, the other brother who was with him in a vision that is going to ride again. And then the scientists are busy testing, researching, trying to prove that this man is wrong, to smite him with a tank. And the prophet says, the next day being a son, I preached on science being of the devil. But why were the scientists appearing in that dream? At the time when he's saying, I'll ride this trail once more. And they are there in the room. So, hmm. Scientists. Researchers. Let's piece this and bring this and bring this fault and this that and this didn't happen and this happened. This was not fulfilled. This was not complete. This was not done. Piece this up, piece this up and bring out and smite him with a tank. Prove to the followers that they are following a wrong thing. Smite who? Jeremiah. What has he done? He was just God's mouthpiece. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus was not a scientist. So when, when, when the disciples of John came, Jesus didn't put him in his binoculars and maybe uh, he, 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 he's, he's what? His microscope to say, look at such a man. He began well. He has ended bad. Isn't that the way they speak about a prophet? He began well. Now you see being in the, in, the, in the prison, he's asking about the very ministry that he introduced and he's sending people to ask, are you the one or should we look for another? He didn't mention that. He said he was more than a prophet. And he, of all that were born of women, no one is greater than John the Baptist. Positive, 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 because he knows Whatever mistake John made, whatever fault, however many, I mean, it, it doesn't matter, matter how many people he offended. They were offended because heaven sent him. Heaven sent him. Glory be to God. And, and, and heaven cannot condemn you for what it sent you for. They only pick the positives and leave the other ones. You know, our God is so merciful that he does not put a cross on where you fail. He just leaves that and ticks where you are right. <laughs> and he fills up the patches and says, by grace, you are 100%. But even if you are not 100%, you can be 40%. But that tree is not condemned. Some brought forth is it 40%? Others 60%? Others 100? But they are all qualified. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So let us come together. Let us devise devices against Jeremiah. Listen. Point number one. Why must we devise devices? One. The Lord shall not perish from the priest. So the, some priests have picked up that. Some preachers have caught the vision. They have stuck with it. And whether we want it or not, they will continue preaching this. So we cannot stop them from preaching. What we do is tarnish what they are preaching. Because we can't stop the law, it cannot cease, it cannot die from the priest who has caught the revelation. There are some priests who have caught this revelation. Amen. Glory to God, and I thank God, brother Charlie should be one of them, that you are still standing with the word as it was handed over. Preach it, man. 
Glory be to God. Whether the devil wants it or not, friends or no friends, associates or no associates, collaborators or no collaborators, as long as heaven is saying yes. As long as somebody here is getting ready to go in the rapture. As long as the spirit of God is moving here. They are not going to stop some priests. There are some priests somewhere who are still standing with the word, who are still standing with the message, and they know it. The devil knows it. Amen. So he wants to tarnish. Reason number one, the law is not going to perish from the priest. So we must find a way to stop this. There are some people who are more serious than we thought. There are some people who have known it deeper than we expected. There are some people who are going into it until they have become it. What do we do? It? How do we, what do we do about this? We must put a stop on this by confusing them and making them busy to compare this, such this. Whether it's wrong or right, taking you backwards. I'm not going to go back to begin to search about a message whether it's right or wrong. And the prophet says, you know, a true believer, you know, he goes beyond right and wrong because he has got a revelation. That's why John the Baptist never was not very clear. That's why I said he could have told the disciples who, who were with him. He said, I introduced this man, followed this man. He didn't say that. They had to follow by revelation. He remained with them, but the two left. So why do we remain with you? You have said you must decrease, he must increase. He's the lamb, you are the introducer. Now we are gone. The two left, the others remain. He didn't chase them. Like we said yesterday. So the problem is remaining at office. And so when you remain at office, unfortunately for us, we are still in this world, we can still hear from the reality himself, Jesus Christ, he's dealing with us. He's in the temple. But also we can hear what they are speaking about the office. So if you don't know where you are standing, the, 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 the statements, the rhetoric, the negative statements about the office can begin to work on you psychologically, spiritually can try to sort of retard your spiritual growth. You begin to, once you begin to question, that's what the devil wants. Taking you back to the drawing board. So what the devil has failed is convincing all priests away from the word. There are some priests and they are confessing it, they know it. The law, the word, this message is not going to cease from some priests. <laughs> some priests are very serious. They are very dedicated to it. So what do we do? Device devices. Device devices against Jeremiah. You can call him Brother Branham, you can call him whatever. You can call him Malachi for or Elijah. He's also a prophet this age. He did his work. <clears throat> yeah. So now this word, the days of the voice. So what do we do again to silence the voice? Device devices. Uh -huh. Because there are some people who have taken this voice very seriously. Yeah. Some preachers. And not only some preachers, but some believers. Yeah. Some people are still ready to say amen. Yeah. They are ready to take it regardless. Yeah. And you are not going to convince them out. They are anchored, they are established. So what do we do about these people? <laughs> uh, the law will not perish from the priest. That's part one. Two, the counsel <clears throat> from the wise. There are some people who are wise. They have identified it. reality. They are not, not devil's fools. Amen. Well, if I'm a fool, then I'm a fool of Jesus Christ. Amen. Call me an idiot. 
That is up to you and down to me. I don't care. <laughs> but the counsel, huh? the counsel, that's revelation to the wise. The wise of the, the age we are talking about is not just your wisdom. I'm talking about the, the wisdom by revelation. That counseling by the spirit, the groom counseling the, the bride and they having communion, sweet communion between them. There is that sweetness. They are not fools. They are not ready to be deceived. They are not cheap. They are not going for cheap popularity. They know where they are standing. They are wise. They are, they are wise virgins. They have got oil. They keep checking themselves all the time. Am I fit? Am I fit? Is there a problem? Can I fix something? God, Jesus, come and fix me up. Fill me up. Refill me, refill me. They are always on the watch out. They are wise. You are not going to follow them. They know whom they are waiting for. They know whom they are serving. They know where they are going. So those wise people, how, what do we do with them? They are not foolish virgins that can relax and have some good time. And well, well, well. Um, sometimes you have to put these things of the word, the word aside and enjoy life, you know. And they don't have time for that. They are watching their garment. They are trimming and feeling and checking and waiting and observing. And the devil knows you are there. So you think a Judas Iscariot today was not supposed to be here? They are supposed to be here. That's why the worst enemies of the message are the ones who were once message believers. They know all the weaknesses and, you know, he went so close to Jesus until he could know how Jesus eats. Because they were eating in the same bread. Gotten used to him. They know so much about him. And they have, they, they, they can convince the people. I mean, you could mistake, he, I mean, Peter to be the, the person who would be, you know, betraying Jesus, not Judas. He was very smart. Smart guy, humble, respectful, very close, attentive. But with a hidden agenda. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, we are supposed to be wise virgins, isn't it? So that's why here he's saying, the counsel will not cease from the wise. Now listen, neither the word from the prophet. So the prophetic message still lives. The tapes, the books are there. And you cannot change it. I mean, you can tell someone he, he made errors, he made, but people are able to go and sit and listen. Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to be just deceived so easily and so cheaply. I was bought by a very expensive price. Yes. So you are not going to deceive me very cheaply. I'm very expensive. <laughs> Glory be to God. So, what do we do? What do we do about these three classes of people? The priest is strong with the word. And then the wise are also there, still wise. And the prophetic message is still there. So, what do we do? This device, devices. Come and let us smite him. Who? The prophet, target, source of the message, source of the word, the revealed word. When we target the prophet, not the priests, not the wise ones, the, the prophet, Jeremiah, let us smite him with the tongue. 
And let us not give heed to any of his words. That's the whole thing. So we must create an excuse of not obeying his word by making it appear false. That is the device devised by the enemies of the word. To fail these avenues. But the problem is, I think sometimes you have to sit and sympathize with the devil. Because to the true elect, he has already left this office. You'll speak a lot of words about this office, as we said yesterday. He's beyond there. And you are not bothering him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So now, you have to look at this because it is very interesting that in every age, Satan will always use the people. Which people? The intended beneficiaries of the God-given message to resist and fight the same. So they devise devices, smite him with the tank, use intellectual reasoning against the message. Use some scientific research methods that are convincing, appealing to people's common sense. Well, I don't depend on common sense. That's why James, I mean Jude said, when I thought about writing to you about the common salvation, I had to package it with that you also contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. So that faith makes you not common. <laughs> Although you may have common salvation, you may be a common message believer. And people will think, well, he's just a common man. What does he know? Like Mayra here, who is not even educated. Mm. Just common. Just common sense will finish him. <laughs> Appealing to the common sense psychologically. Yeah. Right. <laughs> to silence this message. Make sure you are armed with all sufficient information, all data. So that whoever wants to rise in defense of the message, you are capable of silencing him with some negative quote. Like I said yesterday. What was in written in what we read in the Bible? Is John saying, I'm not Elijah? Are you that Elijah? No. But Jesus comes and says, if you are to receive it, this was the Elijah that was to come. So that was for a bracketed special group of people who are designed to receive it. But the rest will end on the letter. We had him verbatim. It is on tape. It's in a message book. I can read you the quote. Oh. So what the prophet himself said can throw so many people. But what about that which was revealed by the reality that he introduced? So whom do we believe? Now, this is the time. So if you are going to go by negative quotes, there are so many. And I don't deny that one day. And God permitted them to be there. Amen. So don't argue, oh, he said this. He said this. He said, 
Okay, the message is broken. It's not open. The seals are not there. They are, they are broke, but not the public. They are, eh? Like he said, do you believe me to be God's prophet? I mean God's servant. He was addressing to people. He said that many times. Do you believe me to be God's prophet? Or I mean God's servant? Because others were not going to receive him as God's prophet. Others will receive him as God's servant. They are comfortable with that. Amen. When you say you are a servant, it's okay, brother, brother. But if you were to say a prophet, thank you for correcting, correcting yourself. But he was not correcting himself. He was addressing different categories of people. It just depends on who you are. It depends on what they have put in you, what receptor. Amen. It's just like we have the same size of memory card, but it doesn't hold the same data. This one is one, one GB, another one is 100 GB, another one is 62 GB. So if we put in you 128 GB, and then another one has got just 5 GB. So when the data is too much, <laughs> I, I can't receive that. <laughs> that is beyond me. <laughs> and you can't blame the man. He can only handle one GB. For you, you are designed. You may look like you have a very small, you know, memory card, but it's having 128 GB. This one has one GB. And you went to the same shop. So you can receive much more, much deeper. This one receives but little. What makes common sense, not revelation, deep things, brother. Don't take me into that. I don't blame you. I only pray for you. Because you can't help it. But I mean you can buy by faith. And the Bible says you buy and don't sell. <laughs> Glory be to God. You know, there is what they call a PDF, isn't it? You have, you have a message that has come to your inbox, but you don't have the PDF reader. So if you don't have a PDF reader, you are not going to receive the message. That's, you are not going to understand it. You are only going to have it in your inbox. <laughs> but without a PDF reader to open the file, you are going to remain message received. But which message? What is in the message? <laughs> what is in the message? You don't know it. But you have received it, okay. I have received the message. I believe the message. That's the problem. That's where the difference is. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Right. So they, let's use intellectual, intellectualism. By the way, God intentionally uses a seventh grade preacher yeah. Yeah. with very poor English. Right. And this age we are having sophisticated well-educated preachers. I sympathize with you people who are very educated. I'm not. It's not a crime. God bless you. But don't try to bring that in this. You are going to knock out your brains. Let's use intellectual reasoning against the message. Use some scientific research, some methods of silencing this message so that we make sure you people are, you know, our team is armed with sufficient information or data that will silence those who try to rise up, those priests who are unceasing in the word. Try to bang them down. Try to draw them into arenas of discussion and argument. Just come and let's talk, talk it over. 
Mm -hmm. And that's where the devil invited Eve, you know, yeah. come to, the, to my arena of discussion. Right. Yeah. That will show you something that Adam, your pastor, has never showed you. Yeah. I'll give you an alternative view. I'm not going to dictate anything. I'm just giving you, just for your information. I know you are a brilliant guy. I know. You can handle this. You are not a dummy. I, I, I know that you are able to challenge me. If I'm wrong, I will accept. If you are wrong, you accept. Let's just have a discussion, arena somewhere. Away. And you go to those websites that are forbidden. Huh? And then there are those who are, why I left the message? Why I left William Branham? You left William Branham? Thank, thank you so much for leaving him. You were wrong. So you were with William Branham. Yeah, I was with Jesus. I'm still with Jesus. Why I left the message? So you just heard the message. Me, I am the message. So we are two different people. I am the message manifested. So I can't leave the message. And I have no time to talk with those who have left the message. Because I can't leave the message. I am the message. So you are right, brother. Continue. Me, I'm the message. Behold, I send you, Elijah. So the package was mine. So Elijah was a servant to bring me the message. It wasn't his. Leave, up, leave William Branham aside. That man is he's innocent. That, 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 that guy, that thing of God is innocent. Leave God's thing aside. Therefore, that holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called a son of God. So it was a thing being used of God to redeem you and me. He's innocent. Do you know that he wanted also to smoke when he was challenged by a woman? He couldn't. He was a prisoner. But he wanted to smoke. And then whoosh. He couldn't do what he wanted to do even. He couldn't, he wanted to take a whiskey. He couldn't drink. He was a prisoner. He wanted to break the word. He couldn't break it. And God said, why? Because there is a work for you to do when you shall be older. And the work was to receive the message for me. So I am standing here today in the defense of William Branham. Leave that man alone. Let him rest in peace. He has done his work. He has gone. Stop talking about him. Let's talk about Jesus. He's here. Talk about the bride. Talk about the word manifested. Talk about rapture. Talk about going home. Talk about New Jerusalem. Talk about millennia. Talk about the bride ministry. It's because they are a bunch of failures. But there are some people who are going home. They are going right home. They are moving on. The move is on for the bride. So, stuck at the office. Devising devices. And there are a lot of websites. Why do you go there? Just the heading alone should tell you this is a danger zone. This, uh, this is a wicked device. Devised against me. Because I am the message. Devised against me and my groom, Jesus Christ. Because that man whom they are talking about, the name William Branham is, is just a name of a man, a thing that God used to bring the message. And the message was to prepare me for him. 
I'm not Mrs. Branham. I'm Mrs. Jesus Christ. So stop knocking, making that useless no noise. I don't have time for it. Glory be to God. So this is what is going on. And the devil is always a liar, you know. The devil is always a liar. But there are those who believe the lies of the devil. You know. And then what one thing is they are saying. Let us smite him with the tongue. They are very good speakers. Sly. Shrewd. Subtle. Hmm? All that, those were the, 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 the characters of the serpent. And that's what I was preaching about in the message. Is, uh, God is provided standard against the mamba at Kadesh Bania. There is that mamba popping up in the way again, in the way. And wants to kill. But there are those who are going to overcome. The friends of the prophet. They are there. Oh, glory be to God. Now here is smite him with the tank. That's first step. Second step. Do not give heed to any of his words. It's a disease that you know, this sounds people from leaving out what they know, what they believe, what God called them to come to. You know this is the truth, but I mean, like you look at your wife, you know I'm supposed to love her, I'm the only husband she has, but you don't even love her. You look at your husband, He's the, the Bible, Paul, who was not even married. I was asking the church one time, why should a, a man who is not married tell you, wives, love your own husband. Husbands, love your wives. I mean, who will love your wife for you? <laughs> Whom do you want to love your wife for you? <laughs> Glory be to God. <laughs> Things that you know. Smile. Cherish. Encourage. Tell her the best word she needs to hear. Tell her she's beautiful. Why should another man tell your wife you look cute? You look beautiful. And you are there from January to December. You are just dumb. Until when another man tells her, it's like she's he's hearing thanks. So I am beautiful. Uh -huh. Oh, you pay your tithes. I mean, who will tell you to pay your tithes? What don't you know? You know it. Rejoice at the word. You come here in the church and you are seated like a brick. <laughs> what will make you happy if Jesus doesn't make you happy? Whom will you receive again? Be who is better than Jesus? What makes you happy? Oh. While others are frowning at him, who should rejoice at him? Who should receive him? Who should praise him? Who should worship him? This is our time to rejoice. It's our time to be happy. We are in heavenly places. And you are talking about rapture? Do you know what rapture means? Extreme joy. Yeah. You are not going to go in the rapture when you are sudden and sad. And... Rejoice until the devil gets confused. You have a pain, you are happy. You are sick, you are happy. You have problems here, yeah, you are happy. And the devil is confused. What do I do to make this man sad? Because you are in the rapture, you are in the process, you are going home. The devil wants you to be gloomy. Who will tell you to rejoice, to be happy 
I mean, who is here? You come to meet whom? You come to meet Jesus. Jesus is here. Jesus is your husband. Uh-huh. Which, which man doesn't want a wife who smiles for him? And you say you are the wife of Jesus and you can't smile at the word? You can't rejoice at the word? You are not free? You are bound? You are bogged down? You are held? You don't exercise your liberty? Something is wrong. We are the people. We are the subject of the devil. The devil is talking about us. That's why he's fighting the word. You are the reason. You are the reason the devil is still upset. You are the the reason there is a lot of devices going on and and moves and talks and, 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 and plans. Because you are here. So you should thank God that you are still positive with the word. Glory be to God. I wish I was a better preacher. Let us not give heed. And you come to church and you are there sleeping, dozy. And you are not pleased. You think you are not helping the devil to fulfill scheme number two? Come, go to church, but don't give heed. And the devil will, you you know, pat your back and, you know, like, you know, I don't, some of you know how hogs are, pigs, you know, and they love being rubbed, and especially when they have some, you know, and then, <laughs> and the devil comes and rubs your back and makes you so comfortable, say, now you can sleep, sleep please, please, I beg you, sleep a bit, I don't want you to listen to this, sleep. And you go back home in the night, there is no sleep. <laughs> There's no sleep. Skim number one, smite the message, smite the prophet, smite the office with the tongue. Deframe him, belittle him. Just like Brother Branham in the message, taking sides with Jesus, he underlines, he underscores the fact that the Sanhedrin was always bent on one thing, to belittle Jesus. To make him non-relevant, irrelevant. Yet they knew he was much, much, much more powerful than all their seven denominations put together in the Sanhedrin. He was giving them sleepless nights. They had to explain why this man is performing all these miracles and they don't have it in their system. So they, it's just Beelzebub. That is easier said, isn't it? Very easy. But it was a statement of envy. Do not give heed to his words after smiting him with a tongue. Makes you like you are accustomed, you are used to the message. You know all the messages. Eh? You know it. Let me tell you. Every time you come to church, you hear something new. Every time I read this Bible, I, I begin to realize I don't know it. He just keeps revealing himself. Every other time. He becomes sweeter. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us not give heed to any of his words. And Jeremiah is saying, Lord, now that I'm rejected, and that is my subject, the subject is God giving heed to the voice of he that is rejected. And you would be the most happy person in this world if you are rejected because of the word. If you are maligned, deframed, abused, segregated, 
Because of the word. You think it was easy for Brother Branham to stand one man against the whole world, against the denominations? What pressure? All the friends and he, he, you can feel him, his heart when he was speaking, standing in the gap and he says, letters are coming in every day. I used to have all the confidence in your ministry. I no longer have it. When you say this, you say this, you attacked this, you preached this, we have withdrawn. We walked out of your service and we went home. Letters coming from friends. You think it does not pain? It pains. You think we, 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 we want to preach it in the way that people are hurt? Or we enjoy when people leave the church? Who would enjoy that? So you don't know the pain. Like Brother Branham says, I would rather get skinned than you want to offend even one of you. But he says, I can't help it. Like I said earlier, he was a victim. That's good. Something what the prophet says here. You know, they, they, these are things that I want you to underline. One, the reason the devil is raising the storm, raising the storm, is because the law has failed to perish. The word has failed, it has prevailed. This is what the devil didn't expect. Some of you people have gone through these experiences. Some of you are survivors of terrible episodes. Survivors of ministers who have left the message. And they never expected you to die with that. But you have survived by God's grace. You have thrived off. You, you are moving on. And the devil said, what do I do? This guy is still there. That woman is still other man. Oh. He has failed to perish from their hearts. The word is still there. They are still holding on. And friends, when COVID came, I didn't know how to come back here, but I've come here to say, press on, hold on. If we don't meet again, let's, let's hold on, let's press on. I have nothing else that I can tell you. Let this word not fail from your heart. And the, and the counsel from the wise is unceasing. They have to, you know, they, they, they want to mask him off from those who want to listen to him. Those who have words of wisdom, encouragement, ministries that can encourage, that can edify, and, and embolden the bride, they, they, they want to silence those voices. And that's why the, the, the devil, when he fights you, he even doesn't want you to have a friend. One brother was telling me, Brother Abraham, I said yes. You are the, why are you a friend of Brother Chad? <laughs> And he called me from the U.S. here. I said, why are you also not a friend of Chad? <laughs> and why are you asking me? Oh, brother Abraham, with your ministry, why do you attach yourself to a man like that? I, I said, which ministry? Which ministry do I have? It's the ministry of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is in him. Jesus Christ is in you. He's in you. He's in you in everybody. So which ministry do I have? And then there are those who are saying, we blame brother Chad for highlighting Myra. So who is highlighting you? Who is supporting who? We can't help it. We are just attributes of God who can't help coming together. It's the fellowship of the attributes and it's automatic. You are not going to stop it. So they want to fight you, but they don't even want you to have a friend. And yet for them, they have friends. Why do you have friends and you don't want me to have a friend? You have those people, you are saying, come. 
There is a company that said, come, let us devise. Why shouldn't also I have a brother so that I say, brother Chad, come, let us stand with the word, let us press on, let's move forward. God bless you, brother Chester. There must be a friend. I said, brother Chester, don't give up. Stand, stand for the word, fight on. I can know from Uganda that I have brother Dan Ratliff as a friend. I have brother Chad, I have, I mean, why not? Jesus paid for it, and, and who are you to ask me about it? I heard from heaven, and I'm comfortable by the anointing of the spirit from heaven that that is a real genuine brother. So who are you to tell me negatives about him? So who is propping up who? I wouldn't have known Chad, he wouldn't have known me if Jesus had not called me. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, they want to silence any counsel, anybody that would be of edification to you, who could support you, who could speak a word that encourages you. They want to cut you off from any brother that has a gift, that has a ministry, any, any brother to isolate you. Like the political world using sanctions. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. These are the demons we are dealing with. And they are very active. I mean, when I come here to preach, I don't preach for Brother Chad. <laughs> we are just servants. I, 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 I nicknamed him a, a bald headed. <laughs> a bald headed what? <laughs> Robert. Me, I'm a, Brother Branham calls me a, 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 a colored raven. Me, I'm a colored raven from Africa. He's a bald-headed one, bald headed one. So if I bring you some white sandwiches, no problem. <laughs> you don't have to ask whether my beak is sanitized or not. <laughs> as long as the word is coming. <laughs> Glory be to God. So, the word from the prophet, the prophetic message, he is proving that it's unstoppable. The fountain is inexhaustible. So, look for the purported faults within and the neg negatively expose it to the public as unfit. So, give me something that's more fit than the message. Show me a ministry that is more vindicated than that of Malachi 4. Give me. Even a quarter of that vindication. Bring it. Bring it. Huh? A bunch of honeycombed so-called great men having nothing. Empty. How dare you? I am more than convinced. Too late. I'm gone, I'm taken. Try elsewhere. Oh, glory be to God. Let's look at something here. You know, the prophet comes here in his quote. He says, I think it's in the message, um, identified, they identified Christ of all ages, which he preaches, I think, in 1964. He says, what is it? When a man breaks through that veil into the Shekinah glory now. Not then. Now. The world calls him a fanatic. Oh, are you ready to be called a fanatic? If you are not ready, don't break through. You want a name, you have a name to protect. You want to be defined. By the nobility, the noble, you know, among the nobles of the world. 
to have a test among a society. So you are highly esteemed, a, man of, a woman of renown, among the echelons of society. Okay? You, have, you don't have to break into. But if you break into the kind of glory now, the world will call you a what? Fanatic. Amen. They can't see what's wrong, but behind there, there is no beauty of him. You lose your beauty when you go there. And he says, he might not pronounce his words right. And that's what the prophet was. He might not dress just right. That's what John the Baptist was in a scheme. Hmm. He might not dress in clergy clothes. She might not dress the way they think she ought to. Now he brings in the sisters also. It may be. But you see, inside, behind that badger skin, behind that human skin, in there is the Shekinah glory. In there is the power. In there is the word. In there is the shoe bread. And the Shekinah glory, which is the light that makes that, that, that makes, that makes light, that ripe, ripens the grain. He continues here, he says, and he, until you come in behind that badger skin, until you get out of your old skin, yeah. old nature, character, You are comfort zone where you, you are living in a level of acceptance in the realm of positive perception. Hmm. Then you come out of your old skin, your old thoughts. Let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. You see, your old thoughts, you leave them. You are all creeds. All the creeds. And you come into the princes of God. Amen. Then the word becomes a living reality to you. Living reality. Not some dead old acarion that you keep belching. Some funny smell. Hmm. The word becomes a living reality. Then you are awakened to the Shekinah glory. Now listen. Then the Bible becomes a new book. Then Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. When the Bible becomes a new book, Jesus becomes the same. Now, when the Bible becomes a new book, you preach new sermons, new understanding, new life. Everything becomes new. And the people don't want the Bible to become a new book. They want to preach from the Holy Bible that is still sealed. Holy right. way of presenting the message. Right. 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 Don't, don't take me out of my comfort zone. Don't talk about these things, brother. Don't. Brother Abraham says the Bible became a new book for him. When the seals were opened, the Bible became a new book. And when Jesus came, you know, the Bible became a new book. That's why he broke the Sabbath, the rest day, to bring rest. Hmm. He broke the rest to the body to bring rest to the soul, which also eventually became rest to the flesh. Because he told a man who has been bound sick for 38 years and said, Rise up, take your bed, walk, go home on the Sabbath day. And then he's freed even physically. But the other Sabbath, other rests would come and go. And he was not resting. Here comes the real Sabbath on the Sabbath. And the new Sabbath breaks the old Sabbath. And gives you the Sabbath. <laughs> Glory be to God. And that's where the problem that in the ministry of Jesus, they had a problem with Jesus. Let's go quickly here in the book of Luke. I just want to finish quickly. 
I'm not even knowing the time here now. <laughs> Luke chapter 13, verse 31. And the same day there came certain of the Pharisees saying unto him, Get thee out and depart hence, for Herod will kill you. Yeah? This is exactly what they told Amos. Get out of here. The king is going to deal with you if you stay here. Yeah. They tell Jesus, get out from here. Go away. Herod will kill you. And Jesus is saying unto them, go ye and tell that fox. Yes. <laughs> and you know, a fox will always howl when it has closed the eyes in the dark. Oh, oh, oh. Blind howlers. Making a lot of noise that they cannot buttress with anything real. We are not a bunch of holers. Holding, making noise for nothing. <laughs> when I say hallelujah, it has substance. <laughs> when I say praise God, I, I feel it from deep in me. When I sing a song, it has substance. Yeah. Go and tell that those bunch of empty holding beasts. They are making a lot of noise for nothing. Blinded. Go and tell him. Behold, I cast out devils. I do chores today and tomorrow. And the third day, I shall be perfected. This was prophetic. Because today is the third day. <laughs> perfected. But they were saying, leave this place. Don't prophesy here. Don't perform your miracles here. We don't want you here. And you'll find that Jesus... They always faulted him. The problem with the, the Sanhedrin was that, uh, and the, the general Jewish populace, was that he was breaking the norms and the traditional way of doing things, breaking the Sabbath. I think that's what they always tell me. One, bro one brother told me, brother, brother Mayra, I have one problem with you. I said, mm -hmm. so you are not preaching the orthodox generally accepted way. I said, can you give me a book on how to preach? <laughs> so you people have got some syllabus <laughs> that preachers should follow. This is like, you know, they wanted to arm David with some kind of special arm. And David says, I'll go in the way that I know. As long as it works, take, take away your, your new ideas. I'll go the way I know God called me to do it. If you can only polish it, brother, and bring it this and add this. But you people, you had this armor and Goliath is here. 39 days you, you are going backwards. And now you are trying to tell me I must put on your armor. What had you done with your armor? Well, this is the way we do it, brother. This is the way we don't go the sides. We always preach it like this and we cover it like, you know, some little mother, mother hen trying to tell the chicks, clack, clack, clack. This is the way we eat. This is the thing. Don't go this way. Just we scratch, scratch here, beer, and, and you just follow my daughter feet and eat. Go the way God called you. We are not the same. I told him, brother, if I preached the way you want me to preach, the, you know, 
the results. That is a brother who had come all the way to see me. And he's telling me, brother, God is using you. But you have to change your way of approach and preaching things like this. If you can just adjust here. And I said, brother, if I had adjusted, you would not have seen this supernatural that you have come to ask me about. That's what I am. Correct me if I'm wrong. By the word. Not by some kind of ecclesiastical idea. Mm-hmm. So that's always what is the problem. He broke the Sabbath and introduced the Sabbath. And brought Sabbath to the man who was in trouble. But he broke the Sabbath to bring the Sabbath on the Sabbath day. Okay? So Brother Branham also became new. And everybody was saying, no, 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 no. We cannot receive you now. It's finished. It's kaput. Fine. Leave me alone. And the Brother Branham says, as long as God stood with me. All men have forsaken me, but he remained with me. More comfortable, isn't it? And more comfortable when he remains. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mm-hmm. So, I want to just come to this. Let me leave some of the things here. The, the Pharisees always wanted to intimidate. But he was more than a match for them. He was God. And I, I, I sometimes wonder, people can get so blinded as to think that this message can be silenced. This message is God. Why are you a mere creature? <laughs> and you think you can silence this? The prophet said, as long as there is even one man surrendered totally in the hands of God, he is the majority. You are not going to stop that man. So we continue a little bit here. But I want to come to something here. And, and, and I want us to go back and examine these statements. Wait, they are telling Amos, Amaziah the priest, a seasoned preacher, a contemporary of the prophet. I know him. In and out. And it's the one telling him, get out of Bethel. What does Bethel mean? The house of God. <laughs> you are chasing the prophet of God from the house of God. And you know what he says? This is no longer a house of God, although it's called a house of God, but it's the king's chapel. Private prayer business. Hmm. That's what they are telling Amos. Where are we read in Amos chapter 7. He's saying, you seer, you prophet, flee. Go into the land of Judah. There you eat bread and prophesy there. But don't prophesy again anymore at Bethel, for it is the king's chapel and it's the king's court. Something sounds, sounds familiar in the New Testament here. Let's open our Bibles. And compare this with 1 Corinthians. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And let's look at, I think, verse 7.
For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou did not receive? Whatever you have, you just received. <laughs> if they are bright, if you are intelligent, if you are beautiful, who made you beautiful? So you think you applied and God gave God some favor to make you beautiful and charming? Oh. If you are beautiful, who made you beautiful? God. If you are handsome, who made you handsome? God. If you are bright, what you call smart, who made you smart? Why is it that in the class, there are some of those people who fail? They try, they study, they fail, and for you, you are always passing. Who made you smart? What weren't you just given by God? And, and if you are a preacher, like me, who, who made you a preacher? Did you go to any training? Are you, are, you, are you very intelligent? Is it because you are so special? God is able to make preachers and believers out of stones. And then... The devil has made some people to reach a point where they think they, 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 they are, I mean, indispensable. If I left the message, it will crumble. Sure. <laughs> Brother, if I leave your church, that church is going to be shaken. So are you Mr. Earthquake? <laughs> Maybe I'm not a good speaker, you'll forgive me. But that's what I am. I don't know how to bring it. English is not my language. So I'm not smart. I'm not bringing things in a smart way. I'm very crude <laughs> and very raw. What do you have that you didn't just receive? What do these people think they have that they didn't receive? What intelligence, what understanding, what revelation, what knowledge, what wisdom, what experience? And then the devil always wants to create a difference. He, you are not comfortable. If you have a problem, you are not comfortable being in unison, in common, in, you know, in having things in common. People want always to deviate, to be special, to be different. Different even from the prophet, from the message. I think here he was wrong. I have a better idea. The message according to brother so and so, Preacher so and so, according to my understanding. Who gave you that little brain of yours? <laughs> Who gave you even the breath you are using to speak? Just like, you know, Daniel told Belshazzar, he says, the very God in whose hands thy breath is, thou hast not glorified. Can you imagine God who is holding your breath in his hands? If he was just to shake it off, you are finished. And you are gone, kaput. When is the burial arrangement? <laughs> when are we... <laughs> finished. I was hearing a brother testify. I think it was Brother Dan and he mentioned something. 
I said, I, 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 my flesh ting, you know, my skin ting. Then when he said, someone said, I'm here to correct the prophet. And in a few times he's gone. Correct the prophet, a divine interpreter. God called, God chosen, God ordained, God equipped, God vindicated. How dare you? Even if you were the devil himself, the devil even saluted. Whatever that little small man would say, the devil would respect. So who are you? I'm smart. I'm not a, a, a fool. I, 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 sure. Well, Pastor Myra has come with an attack on America. Yes. We are not Americans. We are not Africans. We are Christians. And if you are an American, you are in the wrong place. You are, you are lost. You are only American physically, but not in the spiritual realm. I have my rights to my mind, to my thinking, to my ideas. You have your rights, devil given. But not God given. The church of God is built on revelation, not rights. So the devil wants to make people device devices that make them different from the prophetic message. Brother, don't be one of them. Sister, don't. So far, so good. You've made it. You are here. Mm -hmm. Let's continue a bit. He's saying, we are in the book of Corinthians, I think. That's where we are. He says, For who maketh thee to differ from another? So if he made you different, it's God who made you different. If he has not made you different, don't try to be different. And what hast thou, what have you got that thou did not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory? If you just received it, why are you bragging about it? <laughs> As if thou hast not received it. As if you made it yourself. You even don't know how you came. You don't know how you were behaving in your mother's womb. <laughs> Let me come to this final point. Verse 8. Now listen to verse 8. Now you are fool. Eh? Now you are rich. And you have reigned as kings without us. Who was the one speaking? This is Paul. Paul the messenger to the Ephesian church. And he's saying because I'm out of place, I'm not there. You are full. You are rich. You have reigned as kings. You've taken over the temple, the house of God, to become chapels. This is the king's chapel. It's no longer Bethel. This is my church. Don't preach that stuff here. I don't want that. Don't believe in the seals being opened. Don't believe in this. Don't believe this. I don't believe this. I don't want this here. Who is speaking? The king. He has a chapel. Hmm. Chasing away the message. Chasing away the prophet. We don't want you here. This is no longer Bethel. This is now the king is chapel. We are reigning as kings. We used to subscribe fully to the message when we were still young, paupers and, and anchored. But now I'm established, I know. 
are mature enough. Don't want a prophet. Back to the Bible. Hallelujah. Back to the Bible. Can you show me a Bible without a prophet? Back to the Bible. A fool. You read the book of Jeremiah, a prophet. Isaiah, a prophet. Daniel, a prophet. Ezekiel, a prophet. So show me a Bible without a prophet. I read Genesis, prophet. Gen Exodus, prophet. Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, a prophet. Moses. Num I mean, judges. I mean, tell me anyway. First Samuel, a prophet. Second. So which Bible is without a prophet? Back to the Bible, brother. Back to the Bible. Come on now. Come on. That's a statement of a deceived fella. Yes, and I'm not scared to say that. Because you had this Bible in your hands and you didn't even know baptism in Jesus' name. <laughs> you were still baptized, dedicated to the pagan gods of Rome. Trinity, God the Father, that is Zeus, God the Son, Baal, given new names, dedicated to the three deities of pagan Rome in the name of Christianity. You were still a pagan Rome believer under guise until the message came. And then you want to Throw away the message and say, I am back to the Bible. When did the message take you away from the Bible? Amen. So you can see the tactics of the enemy. Confusing the vulnerable. And that's why they are concentrating on the office of the prophet. They don't want to go beyond that office. Because once we succeed in demonizing, weakening, and you know, belittling and silencing that office, then the purpose of God for this age is finished. The devil knows how important that office is. The devil knows it. But the problem is the office has already done its work. So you are fighting a shadow. The man is resting, he's gone. He's waiting for me. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. So we have this problem. And then he says, it's, I mean, it's very evident that the absence of the messenger Paul made the Corinthian pastors kings. And Paul is saying, now you have reigned as kings. Now you are full. Now you are rich. You have the money. I mean, I was talking to one brother in Africa. You know that these people here are buying preachers from Africa because they have the money. Buying them out of the message. I said, how can you be so stupid? Huh? Give me how? I mean, which money will you give me to sell the word? It goes on to show most of these people had no revelation. Because revelation is not bought. Revelation is not brainwashed. But they are using money. They are building people houses. They are building people. They are buying them vehicles. If you denounce William Branham, I'll give you this. I'll give you this. Because they are rich. They are full. They are now kings. They are taking over God's, you know, God's sanctuaries and trying to own them and pocket them. And I've come here in America to tell them. I know some of them will listen to this. Let them know that they are not going to chase the message even out of America and succeed. They will not. They will not chase. They will deceive some fools. 
The simple ones. The greedy ones. The blinded ones. But the bride is not going to be deceived. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, you begin to turn Bethel into chapels of kings. Don't want this that. Don't want. And then one brother was saying, brother, I had wanted to invite in my church. But um, he, when I heard this sermon that you preached, I said, I said, you have done me a very good service. I don't even want to come to your place. I don't want to, to waste my strength there. I said, God bless you. You have done me a very good. I'm not looking for places to preach. I am a pastor. I have a home church. I'm not dying to preach in anybody's church. I've come here because I'm a friend of BCF, not because I'm dying to preach here. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, King's Chapel, Kings, they have reigned as kings. They have great power. And who made them kings? The message. Who made them popular? The message. How did they get to know those men in Africa? The message. How did they get the addresses? The message. How did they get their contact? Because of the message. And now they are using that popularity to fight it. Praise God. But it's going to be people that are not going to be deceived. And I'm not going to be deceived. And I believe you are not going to be deceived. Amen. Glory be to God. Because that is the enemy device, the devices. But there is a device from above. Let me tell you something. As I finish, let's go back to prove to you that before they came up with the thought of devising this, God had already devised a device against them before they came up to device the devices. <laughs> Let's find that God is a device in Jeremiah 18 also. They didn't know that before they came up in Jeremiah 18, 18 to device their devices in Jeremiah 18 verse 11. Let's see what God is saying. Now therefore go to speak to the men of Judah. Huh? And of Jer the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Saying, thus says the Lord. Behold, I frame evil against you. Mm -hmm. And device a device against you. You. So before they could devise their devices, God has already devised a device against those who devise devices. <laughs> Brother Chad, I think you better come and take over. <laughs> Glory be to God. Behold, I frame. Evil against you. Eh? And he says, and device, a device. For him, he has one device. He doesn't have devices. These ones have devices, but for him, he has one. <laughs> Glory to God. Against you. Return ye now, everyone, from his evil way and make your ways and your doings good. And you know what they say? And they say, there is no hope. But we will walk after our own devices. Ah. We will walk after our own devices. And we will, everyone, do the imagination of his evil heart. Adamant, stiff-necked, cross the line of mercy. They don't want to repent. But before they devise their devices, God has devised his. Amen. 
In other words, God is never taken off guard. Amen. Don't sit there in your home and you sympathize with God. <laughs> so, Mr. God, now what are you going to do? No. Glory be to God. God is going to prove his word. And he has already done it. And he'll do it and over and over and over. And he'll vindicate and he'll take us home. And, and, and there's going to be a bride. And there is already a bride. And there's going to be a people that are going to stand undefeated and deceived. Amen. With revelation anchored. They don't care what comes or what goes. What they are going to lose, what they are going to gain is not their problem. Who leaves them, who stands with them is not their problem. Whether it's so, my own wife, my own husband, my own friend, sister, brother, my relatives, that's not my problem. I am not the savior. Salvation is of the Lord. I'm only going to say, Lord, help me stand. I'll pray for my brothers. I'll pray for my friends. I love them. I don't hate them. But to convince me away from this, impossible. Romans 8 comes there, says, I'm persuaded, Amen. more than persuaded. Amen. And Paul says that neither death yep. nor life, Amen. things present, yes. things that are to come. Yes. If it is sickness, if it is trouble, if it is persecution, is it nakedness? Is it peril? Aye. Nothing shall separate me from the love, Aye. charity. Aye. I'm hooked, I'm taken. It's done. Amen. Satan, you are wasting your time. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. And I want to tell you, God is here to take care of your every need. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Why? There is a, 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 a honing up. A reducing of the number. Yes. But that's even better. When Jesus was to feed 5,000, he needed five pieces of bread. And they gathered 12 baskets. Because there has to be 12 testimonies to the 12 tribes of Israel. But when he was to feed the, 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 the 4,000, he needed seven. And they gathered seven baskets. Why? In a shadow for the seven church ages. But then last of all, when they were in the ship and Jesus is warning them about the, the, the living the bread of the denominations, he says, is it because we have not carried bread? They remember they had only one bread. So seven plus five, twelve. In other words, every disciple was represented by a piece of bread. But eventually the 12 disappeared into one. So time is coming that revelations and ministries are going to disappear into one. The ministry of Jesus Christ. Personalities and big men, big this, big that, are all going to disappear into one. That's all you need. The word is the healer, the word is the blesser, the word is the security, the word is your, you know, your everything. He is everything. The inexhaustible fountain, no one that's unstoppable. And they were saying, what do we do? The word continues coming, continues coming. I mean, we are not preachers who are going to dry out. This is an inexhaustible, inexhaustible fountain. The word will keep coming because you are here, still here. God is working on you. Amen. And make sure you take the word. Amen. And you are going to overcome the devil. I don't care how many devils are coming. Amen. I'm not scared of the future. Amen. You shouldn't be scared of the future. Amen. That's why he came. Amen. That's why he came down. Amen. Glory be to God. So as I finish... As we go to pray, I think I've left so many things here. 
But there is this inexhaustible nature of the word fountain. And it has a guarantee that no matter how much it's fought, overlooked, rejected, it will always be there producing that water Amen. for those who are thirsty. Amen. It will always be there. And if you are here, you have a problem, you have sickness, you have got trouble, you have got this, don't think you are going to look for a certain Messiah, a certain great man to try somewhere. The word in you will take care of your every need. Sometimes we had been thinking, I think brother so-and-so was the one to do it. Brother so-and-so was the one to do it. Brother so-and-so was the one to do it. And then the very person you saw who was very strong in the word collapses. And then the weak you you are there. I mean, why would God take away the powerful, strong minister of Brother Branham and he takes him away and leaves you? Because that which is in you must mature. And that's why Jesus says it's expedient for you that I go. Because if I don't go, the comforter will not be manifested. It's very important that I physically disappear, that I can come in you. So this man physically goes away, that the one he introduces comes into us. So that we don't have to keep looking for William Branham. Pray for me. Brother so and so, pray for me. Let me ask you one question as I go to pray. You think who is going to pray for your wife better than yourself? You, you, you can send many prayer requests on forums and, you know, but who will pray for your husband better than yourself? Pray for your daughter better than him. And then you just send the message and relax and sleep. The brethren are praying. How sure are you even in 10 of them are praying? Make prayer your habit, your life. Wake up and pray and seek God. All that we have is in us, but only waiting to be unleashed by that trigger of your personal revelation arising up to claim. Not as an amateur, but as a son of God, a daughter of God. Because, I mean, God has no big ones and small ones. Like the prophet says, he doesn't have grandchildren. Who is going to work for your rapture? Who is going to wake you up and say, come on, rapture time, darling, darling, wake up, we are going in heaven. No. It will be all. Whoever will be going, will be going. So work out your salvation. Work it out. There is that part. It's already done, yes. But prayer why do you think Jesus prayed? Did he need you to pray? But why did he pray? And why shouldn't you pray? Why shouldn't you seek God? These demons here that are marauding, moving around, the only way you watch out against them is through prayer. Being in contact with your God. A personal relationship with your God. Until you have him where you, wherever you are, in your office, you feel his presence. In your house, you feel his presence. You are in the kitchen, you feel his presence. Wherever you are, that's the challenge. And he gives you special grace. He is going to equip you to come to that. 
But let there be that willingness, that thirst, that craving, that, that desire. The prophet says he's even wanting to hear you call him on the scene. He's, he's yearning to hear you call him. Now we are remaining with one challenge. If you think this message is true, let that God come and show himself. Yes. And this is a very ripe time for him to come and prove that the message, the vindication, the anointing, the power didn't go with Malachi 4. He's actually more here now. God doesn't do what he's going to do in the prophet. God reveals what he's about to do through his servants, the prophet. Surely the Lord God shall do nothing but first reveals the mystery of what he's going to do through his servants, the prophet. So the prophet just revealed what God is going to do. So the doing time is now. This is the doing time. And where is he going to do it? Through you, in you. We are here to glorify him. We are here to prove the devil a liar. We are here to prove the skeptics that they are wrong. We are here to prove them that the message is real and that the devil is a liar and that we are going home. Come on. That's why you are here. That's why it is you who is still here. Not your father, not the other one, not the other one, not the other one. Leave the other ones alone. You are here. And this is your time. May God bless you. Let's stand up. Oh, hallelujah. Think about it, friends, as we humble ourselves and close our eyes. You can feel his princes. I can feel his princes. He's here. Anything can happen. I mean, I don't even need to tell you to do what. You can tell him what you want done in your life and believe in your heart. I'm just going to pray together with you. If you want to be remembered in prayer, please just lift up your hand and we pray. Loving Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this evening. I want to thank you, God, for this message. Oh, God, what shall we say, Heavenly Father? What shall we say, Lord? The Lord, you chose a vessel. He suffered. He was abused. He was rejected. But he stood. Against the whole world, against all the demons. To bring this message the way you wanted it to come. And we are here, the privileged recipients of the same. Why would we let you down? Why would we be half-backed? In the time of maturity, in the time that the sons and daughters of God are supposed to be manifested. Why would we have to become temples of spirits when the heaven is full of the Holy Spirit? Why would we be weaklings moving around as if heaven is not behind us? Why would we be beggary? Why should we struggle with the demons and spirits and sicknesses and weaknesses as if you never suffered on Calvary and pay the price? Quicken our faith, quicken our hearts, quicken our understanding. Revive us, Lord. Come down, Lord God, and take over. I pray for your children here, Lord. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? This is the time, Lord God, to come and prove yourself. Come and heal the sick. Transform. Lord, change our lives. Bring us to what you want us to be. And lift us higher to that table and of faith where all things are possible to them that believe. Oh, Heavenly Father, I dedicate your children into your hands. 
I pray that God will have mercy and strengthen those who are on the battlefield in many places, battered, ridiculed, hated, and feel like, where should I turn? May they feel your presence. May your hand reach out unto them, encourage them, strengthen them. For soon and very soon, we feel the pull. We know going home has come. Help us to be found ready, to be found faithful. And visit the pastor here and all the preachers here and all the servants of God who are here. And all those listening in, maybe where they will listen to this around the world. Help them. Help every preacher. Visit those pulpits that the devil is wanting to take over. Why should the Bethels of God be changed into chapels of men who have become kings and bosses? Marauding around because of the blessings that you gave them. God, have mercy upon your souls. Have mercy upon your sheep. Have mercy upon those souls that are being abandoned and they don't know what to do. Sheep that were told that the message is the truth. And then only to be told by the same person that it was a lie. Help them. Father, just follow this message in our hearts. And Jesus quicken us into that which you want us to be. Oh God, bless the pastor here. Strengthen him, encourage him. Lord, you let me sometimes see a few things that go in his life and how he feels and how he is fought. And give him the grace, encourage him and strengthen him and bless his wife. And Lord, whatever they go through, bless the congregation here, the deacons, the trustees and all the believers. Give them the grace to stand. To stand and shame the devil and glorify you. I thank you because, Lord, you have done it so far. And you can do it for them again. I dedicate them unto you as your servant. In the most holy and matched name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Sweep over my soul. Sweep over my soul. Sweep over. you love him love him because he's faithful amen love him because he's true love him because he never will fail amen I appreciate the word more than I ever have in my life it gets stronger as I get weaker the message gets stronger amen as I find myself more incapable of doing anything right I find how perfect the word is to do everything in my life that I can't do myself I found the message to be true. Amen. I was thinking as 
Brother Abraham was preaching about Isaac and Rebecca, how Eliezer, and Brother Ben was our Eliezer, went to fetch a bride for Isaac. And Eliezer went with a message and Rebecca believed it and Laban and the other family members, they were involved. And, and finally Rebecca accepts the word and she travels all the way back to meet Isaac and they meet, they unite. And he takes her into his mother's tent, they become one. I just imagine, you know, can you imagine if Laban comes for a visit some years later? He says, oh, Rebecca, Rebecca, I found out we were wrong. Eliezer wasn't a true servant. He was an imposter, and, and those gifts that he brought, he, he got them from another source, and Eliezer wasn't true. And can you imagine Rebecca saying, it's too late, amen? I've been in the tent. I'm impregnated by Isaac. We've become one, amen? Now it's not about whether Eliezer was true or not true, amen? I've already been united with Isaac, the promised son. Listen, the arguments don't matter anymore. The criticism doesn't matter anymore. If you've united with Christ and become pregnated with the Word of God, it doesn't matter anymore. It's too late to decide if it's right or wrong. You're pregnated by the Word. It doesn't change anything, amen? Somebody can say, you know, Brother Brennan was a liar. And you say, praise God. And they say, why you say praise God? Because God can use a liar to unite me with Christ. That's the power of God, amen. So it doesn't matter anymore. It's too late, amen. Let it be too late for you. Amen, let the reality of what we received make all the accusations. It doesn't matter, it's too late. It can't change anything. I've already been united with Christ. And what's growing in me will not stop growing because it's the reality, it's the life. It was the purpose, it was the point of the message. You cannot stop the message by stopping the messenger. It's too late because the messenger brought the message and the message is alive and a bride. You would have to stop every elect member of Christ's bride to stop the message and you cannot stop this message. It's too late. So you can fight the prophet all you want, but you're fighting a losing battle because the message is alive and a bride. She's received her Christ, her Isaac, and she's now impregnated. Now the word is in her, and you can't stop that. And for that, I say thank you, God. Now, God, let me act like it. Let me live like it. Let me believe like it. Let me turn a deaf ear to everything else and give my whole life to this reality that I've received and quit listening to accusations and quit worrying about all these things. Let me put all my focus to this thing right now, to this life, because this is what you've called me to. How many want to dedicate yourselves to what you are? How many want to dedicate yourselves to the reality that you've received? And quit listening to anything else and just focus on this. That's what I want to do. As I go home today, what I want to do is be more dedicated to this reality than anything else. I want to be more focused on the reality that I received than anything else in this world. That's the greatest desire of my heart. Amen. God is good, friends. God is real. This message is a living reality. It's not books and tapes. It's a living bride manifesting Christ. Praise be to God. Amen. If you want to be that committed bride and focus, though you raise your hands, let's just bow our heads today and commit our lives afresh to Him. Let's just pray. Everybody pray. Don't just listen to me pray. You pray. You commit your life. You raise your hands as we pray. Almighty God, we give ourselves to you afresh, Lord. God, for, forgive us, Lord, for being distracted. Forgive us for the voices we've allowed in our minds. But God, we're dedicating ourselves afresh tonight, Lord. We have heard the reality of your word, and it has awakened all with all freshness the life that's on the inside of us. And God, we want nothing more than to, to, to live this reality, Lord, to focus on this reality. God, silence every other voice, Lord, and let yours be the only one we pay attention to. Quicken us to a greater reality. Manifest yourself in a greater way in us. Let us forsake all others and cleave only unto thee. 
Let us give over every voice, Lord. May it, may it pale in comparison to your voice. Maybe that the only one we listen to. Oh God, we commit ourselves to you afresh. I raise my hands, Lord, to surrender everything to you, to commit myself completely to you. Take me, Lord, and do with me, Lord, what you always purpose to do in my life. God, move through each person, Lord, that's here, that's listening to the word. May you bring them to that purpose you've purposed in them. May they surrender, Lord, and lay down their life and give you preeminence in a greater way that you might accomplish what you have designed for them to accomplish. Oh, God, we love you. We thank you for the word that we've heard. We pray, almighty God, that you would just move, Lord, in our midst, move in our lives, bring a greater manifestation in each one of us. God, as we walk out these doors, let us not forget what we've heard, Lord. Let us not, not, not let this desire not fade away, Lord, with the cares of life, but may it, we fan it on a daily basis and keep the embers burning, Lord, that we might give you the preeminence in every way. God, we love you. We thank you, God, for the word that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for using the vessel. We pray you'd strengthen that vessel of our brother. Give him rest tonight and strength, Lord. And God, if you see fit that we come back tomorrow, may you use him again. For, Lord, we want more of you, Lord. We want to see you unveiled more. We want to receive more of you, God. We want to manifest more of you. We need you, God. In this hour we live, we need you, Lord. More than anything else, we need you, Lord. We don't need anything else. We only need you. The revealed word, Lord, our bridegroom, you're the only thing that we need. And you're more than enough. And God, we love you. We commit ourselves to you. And we thank you, Father. We ask, God, that you would help us in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Bless your friends to sing, Brother Ben. Shine through me, Lord, shine through me. Let the light from the lighthouse shine through me, Lord, shine. Sing it again, brother. Oh, shine through me, Lord, shine through me. Let the light from the lighthouse shine through me. God bless you. Amen. As you go, may God be with you. We'll be here tomorrow, Lord willing, 1030. You're welcome to come, join us. Come with expectation. Come with a heart that wants more of him. He's given us so much, but how is it we can still want more? God bless you tonight. I want to remind you of the fellowship. You're welcome to join us in the fellowship hall for that if you'd like to stay. And just... Go in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Let's sing. Go through me. Let the light from the light house shine through me. Lord, shine through me. Lord, shine.
Oh!